part is writing a sine and cosine function given the graph. So what we're going to do is what we always do, which is always identify those first four characteristics of the graph. So those include uh, amplitude, period, phase shift, and vertical shift. They're the exact same, whether it's sine or cosine, three of these four are the exact same. The only one that's different is your phase shift. So um, as we look at these, a couple reminders. Um, we, we refer to the vertical shift on these based not on the peak, not on the valley. We look at these vertical shifts in terms of the midline. So... Um, the midline is also important for amplitude. So if we jump first to amplitude and we say from the midline to a peak or a valley, how high have we gone? Um, and what we find is we've, we've gone two units. So our amplitude from midline up or midline down is two. Um, and while we're looking at this midline, we can identify the vertical shift. Those are kind of our two easy ones to do. So in this case, that midline in a parent function, a standard function, is right on the x-axis. Here our midline is down here at negative 4, so our vertical shift we say is negative 4. The period of this graph, we look to see from one peak to the next, how long did it take to get there. So if we look at this peak here, we were, well, might be, might be a little easier, let's do the valleys. If you look at this valley, we're a pi over 4 unit away from the y-axis. So, so we've got a pi over 4 unit here. The next valley occurs clear over at 7 pi over 4. So how far is it between these two? Well, 7 pi over 4 plus another pi over 4, that's 8 pi over 4. Or just 2 pi. So our period is just 2 pi. Our phase shift is going to depend. So if we're looking at sine, sine should start, right? Our parent function should start and do this and move on forever, go on forever. Um, but that, that kind of midpoint here has been shifted over to pi over 4. So our phase shift for sine uh, is pi over 4. I'll note that it is sine. Cosine, uh, remember cosine starts at a peak and then goes up and down and up and down. So um, our peak is clear over here at 3 pi over 4. Um, as opposed to having, that's for cosine, um, the peak right at the y-axis. So we've identified the four items we need to get this into the equation, so I'm going to start our sine equation, say y equals, um, well, you know, up here I'll write the a sine b, parentheses, x minus c plus d. We all have a, seemed like a good handle on the a, the c, and the d, but the b is what trips some people up. So, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, um, I'll fill in the A, so Y equals 2 sine of, now B is what's tricky, right? Because B is where uh, we say 2 pi over B is equal to the period, which is, in this case, it's 2 pi. So if we want to find out what B in the equation is, B itself is not equal to the period. B is equal to whatever this if fraction turns out to be. Well, if I replace, you know, if I if I run the algebra, multiply both sides by B, divide both sides by 2 pi, we actually find B is equal to 1. So B equals 1. Um, so that's 1 x minus c. c is the phase shift. So phase shift for sine was pi over 4. And our vertical shift was down 4. If we look at this for cosine, a stays the same.
B stays the same. It's our phase shift C that changes. Minus four. Um, and then we can box this in. Okay. So let's look at this next one, see if we can't find out anything different. So um, I'm not sure again what happened here. There we go. Um, we're going to identify amplitude, period, phase shift, vertical shift. So here's, here's our x-axis down here. Here's our midline way up here. So right away, our vertical shift is clear up here at two units. So vertical shift is two. Our amplitude from midline up, let's see, we went from two to two and a half or from two to one and a half. So our amplitude is actually just a half a unit. Um, our period on this one, so if we went from valley to valley, that's, uh, let's see, negative two. So negative two and another two. So our period here is actually four units long. And our phase shift, well, for sine, I'll do sine and then cosine. So our sine graph, you know, really this should be our starting point because then you go up and then down and up. So that's where we should be to start, but that's at the negative one coordinate. So negative one. And for cosine, cosine actually looks good, right? Cosine, you start at a peak. Our peak happens to be right on the y-axis. So phase shift for cosine is zero. Um, while we're at it, we're going to quickly do our two pi over b is equal to our period. Our period equals four. So b equals 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2. Because again, period and b are not equal. Do not think that they're the same thing. So if we write y equals, let's see, 1 half sine of b pi over 2, x minus c for sine was, um, phase shift was negative 1. So negative means it's x plus 1. And then our phase shift was up 2. Cosine, we keep the same amplitude, same period. There was no phase shift. And we get plus two. Uh, let's see. Uh, two sine x minus two cosine. Yep, half pi over two x plus one. Half cosine over two x plus two. Perfect. Okay, so that's what we get. We box that in. Um, now I will say. An easy way to check this, if this is on a section that is calculator allowed, and I believe it will be, why not take the time and, and go ahead and write these equations into your uh, calculators, graph them, and check those points. You know, trace your graph to zero and see if it matches two and a half. Um, or over here, see if you can trace it to um, trace pi over four and see if your, your uh, cursor goes to negative four. Honestly, you guys, there's no reason not to take the time, graph it, and check your points versus the graph that's uh, being shown. But um, anyways, that's question four. Uh, end of this video, and we'll move on to the next one.